Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the Western Alliance Era 2 medium tank, the M60A1, which is the middle of the tech tree Era 2 line for the M1A2. It's the one that's in the middle. You can either go to this tank or the M60A2 to progress to the M60A3. I'd definitely say go to the M60A2 because that thing's a lot of fun and it's really filthy. Whereas this thing is a straight edged M60. It's basically the same it, it, same play style as the, the M60 before it. It's the same play style as the M60 after it. To be honest, the whole M60 line so far up this line is just been kind of a bit boring because it really feels like you're playing the same tank at er entry era, mid era and top era to tank. It feels like you're playing just exactly the same tank. You've just got a bit more hit points. You've got a little bit better, ever so slightly better gun handling and ever so slightly better DPM. And that's it. The tank just feels pretty much the same other than that all the way through. So by the time you get fully upgraded on this, it just it's just a bit of a slog, to be honest. And you're like, oh, I just feel like I'm a worse version of the M60A3, which is exactly what you want, because you're an M60A1, right? You're an upgrade of the M60, which the M60A3 is also an upgrade of the M60A1, or the M60 in general. So it is what is to be expected. But yeah, by the time you're playing it... Yeah, it's just a bit, I don't know, I, I just found, so far, grinding the line, my experience is just a little bit boring, and by the time I'm getting 50, 40, 50 games in, and I've fully upgraded the tank, I'm a bit like, oh, I just can't wait to move on now. And, yeah, that's generally my experience of it. But it does have some good features, like, obviously, compared to the standard M60, the armor profile in this tank has got a little bit better, you've got a little bit better angled in places, the upper plate... Is a little bit stronger the lower plates a little bit stronger like i say the angles again are a little bit more effective so you can ricochet a fair few more shots than the standard m60 can which is definitely nice and a definite little bit better reprieve but you shouldn't rely on the armor because it doesn't really work that way the gun handling that i say is pretty damn decent the apcr or the standard ap pen sorry at 421 is really good again you're not going to struggle with the fp4 on ones that are really prevalent in this era and then the he rounds are dirty with 250 pen and 490 590 alpha sorry and if you just you brutalize people with those rounds because it, when you're facing stuff like the leopards that were in front of us there you can butcher them and their better dpm doesn't count for anything when you're penning them with he and obviously he has good module damage so you're going to be doing some stuff like amorax and things like that to him so you want to be doing that but yeah i don't know for me, it's just, it, as a grind, it's kind of just felt a little bit boring. Uh, personal preference is always the way it is, right? Uh, it's okay. Uh, so I'm not, it's not a, it's not a bad tank. It's a pretty competitive tank. I just felt like I was playing a worse version of the top era three tank. And when you stock as well, it feels like you've taken a massive step backwards because you're going, right, I've got to grind this gun, which is a pretty decent gun, but I've got to grind through it with this stock gun now, which is terrible and then get to this gun, and it's just a bit like, ugh, oh well, it is what it is. So in terms of a crew on the M60A1, it's the same as a run on the M60 and the M60A3, a run born leader, rapid reload, six cents, situational awareness, trap mechanic, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun, and off-road driving. Off-road driving to help me get some top speed by nullifying the effects of the ground resistances on the tank, all the gun handling perks to make this gun as good as humanly possible, and then, yeah, that, generally all the other perks that I'll tend to run anyway. So, yeah, in terms of equipment as well, I run Rammer, Vert Stabs, and the Ammo Swapper. Same reasons as I do on the M60. Rammer to make the DPM 10% better, always. 20% more accuracy with the Vert Stabs, always, always, always. You want, especially in Eretic, you just want to make this gun as good as possible. You want to be able to make sure that you're hitting all these targets. It's especially m more useful as well because you want... To be able to make the gun really great, especially over long distances. Because obviously, especially at Era 2, you're starting to fight a lot more over long distance. And meaning that you can hit those shots at longer distances is definitely what you want to be doing. And Auto Swapper, because yeah, like I say, the HE rounds on this tank are dirty. And you want to make sure that you can hit and you can change those rounds where needed. So, this first replay is on Heilbrom. And so far... We've accumulated 5.7k damage with 2k assistance, which is pretty decent so far for an era 2 tank. And I'm just trying to flank to get into a position to start shooting the tank that was in this smokescreen and the heavy tank at A1 if it starts to push out on 
to attack my friend. And it is the tank that you always love to see. It's a T72 Ural, which is exceptionally easy to pen. It's always nice seeing those tanks on the enemy team because they are so easy to pen. They're not like facing a 4211 or a T72 AV because they're a pain to pen. Speaking of a T72 AV, because they're a pain to pen. And you've really got to hit the right spot, even with 421 pen, to go through them. Obviously, with 421 pen, it gives you the ability to try and go through the weak spots, as opposed to if you had 370 pen, where even trying to shoot some of the weak spots, it doesn't go through. So, yeah, seeing T72 Urals is always a nice thing. And fortunately enough, we managed to set this AV on fire, which is great. We're just trying to find the shot into his upper plate. Unfortunately, it does track damage only. We're on 825 hit points, so we do have to be careful because this guy can two-shot us. Most of our team is behind us. I'm just worried that something might charge out from the base running away from my team, but nothing's happening. We're just watching this AV on True Vision here, watching what he's doing. We can see he's starting to progress across the bridge. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to poke out and I'm going to try and slap a shot at him as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, as it is in Era 2 and in Era 3, generally, everything's hyper-accurate. And even though he was doing 70 kilometers an hour over the bridge, he managed to just slap a shot straight at us and hit us easily. Penders, which puts us down to a one-shot, which means we've got to be really careful when going against this guy. Fortunately enough, we managed to surprise him and get a shot in. I'm just trying to chase him around so I can get a shot at him and kill, finish him off. But he manages to use his superior mobility that that tank has to get away around the side of this rock. So now I'm just being careful because obviously, naturally, I'm a one-shot for this AV. And... I've got my team coming. I'm going to wait for my team to join us so that they can take a bit of the flack. Because if this guy decides to shoot at me, I'm dead. Now the team's coming in. It's time to try and get in and get a shot at him. Unfortunately, the shell must have hit his upper plate and bounced. And we don't quite get the damage in. But we do finish the game with a really nice total for the M60A1. We finish with the victory. Three kills. 9.6, nearly 9.7k damage. 2k assistance as well. That's what, 11 and a bit k combined. Ace tanker. 1767 base XP. A really nice game for the M60A1. And the tank, like I say, it's not, it's not too bad. It's just, it's just sort of, as with the M60, it's a tank that you're going to play, you're going to grind through, just so you can move on to be able to play the top era tank in the M60A3. Like, for me personally, I, I'm never going to play the M60A1 or the M60 ever again, now that I've ground through them, because there's no point. I may as well play the M60A2 for the memes with that 152mm ATGM launcher, which is, it's really meme -y. it's a great, fun tank. Or... I'm going to play the M60A3 because that's the top of competitiveness, right? Because it's got what, the full features. Although it is still really annoying that you have to grind out the top the, the top gun that you've been using on the M60A1 and on the M60. You can only unlock and use after you've finished the grind for the M1, A, M1 Abrams. Sorry. Weird. That is what it is. So we're on the second game. And we're on Fisherman's Bay. And we're taking this little position on this ridge because... Well, it's a good little position to take. You can get some good early damage out. And to be honest, depending on the way teams set up sometimes, you can also get a lot of damage just by staying here. And we're at 600 damage because unfortunately our Hesh didn't pen the Magak. It's a Magak 5, so the Hesh was never going to... Well, the Hep. It's not he he Hesh, it's Hep. The Hep was never going to go through that guy's lower plate because of the spaced armor. Like I say, you just, when you're using the HE, you have to know what you're going to shoot at and what you're going to pen. And when you know a tank's full of spaced armor, like the AV, like a Magak 5, you're not going to go through it with HE. You've just got to switch it back to your standard APCR. So we get a nice shot through the Magak there. We've got a shot through the T-72 as well. This Mobat is up on this ridge line, which the Mobat is a fairly easy pen. So we're going to slap the shot straight through his little cupola he's got. We're switching to HE, so we can slap it at this light tank. Because if we pen the light tank, we're going to do a lot. And if I didn't pen, I was hoping that I might actually track it in place, which would nullify the threat. We do slap another shot his back end. I don't think that I actually penned again, because it does have a little bit of space armor on the back. That tank is really annoying. But it is what it is. We can't quite get a shot at those two guys over there, though. So we're just going to keep our eye on it. But we've got to keep our eye on the guys in front, too. But the enemy team is progressing on the flank in front of us. So we're going to start trying to help our guys in the town. We get a big shot into the AV there. Just turn our attention just in time to block a shot from the other guy in front of us. Now I've shut down the AV. I'm turning my attention back to the guys in front of me so that... I can block the shot if it's incoming. And again, we're just looking for the shot into that medium tank there. And we get that one in. 
the TR580. We're just trying to get another shot into it. Unfortunately, it doesn't go anywhere near him, which is a shame. Now there's the T72 M1 through there. We ricochet off that guy because it's not the Ural. And unfortunately, the T72 M1 actually has some armor to it, unlike the Ural. And we ricocheted. We get a nice shot into that light tank that's behind us. But now they're pushed into that K2 position. This position I'm in is not a good place to be. Because if they start getting shots at us from over there, it's not going to end well for us. Because we're not very safe from them whatsoever. I'm just watching for shots at these guys if they were to overpoke and attack our guys. There we go. The TR-85 has. But unfortunately, it just goes wide and hits the upper plate and bounces on that guy. Shame, but we do get a shot into his side. He manages to snap a shot straight into us, and now it's time we just got to run away. We've got to run to help our team in the town and try and get below the ridge line. We get a nice shot RBRT into the Magak 5, which, like I say, most tanks near to are pretty good at. If you're running away, just you may as well take the RBRT chance because most of the time you're going to hit them and you, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? So we get another shot into the Magak 5's side turret there but he's after this scorpion 90 i know that pretty much most of their team is on the other side of this ridge and then the other guys are in front of us so i'm trying to push forwards to get rid of this magak unfortunately he manages to pen us and we get rid of him the light tanks flitting about over there there's the tr 580 here and i'm thinking can i slap the shot into his lower plate with he i'd rather like to destroy him with the he it doesn't quite go in the scorpion 90 gets wrecked there we've got the HE straight through his lower plate, which is nice for 530. I say every opportunity you get, if you can, slap the HE rounds in. Try and pen people with the HE rounds and improve your DPM with these rounds if you can. Because by doing that, again, your DPM gets way better. And module damage increases your chances of stuff like Amorax. So we do have the APCR rounds in. Unfortunately, the T-72 just got below the ridge as we fired at him, so we unfortunately missed. But I'm going to move now into a more aggressive position to try and get some shots at these guys while they're trying to focus my medium tanks out and while they're pushing in very vulnerable positions. There's a Turan 6 in front of us, which doesn't have the best gun depression, but naturally we're above him, so he doesn't need the gun depression. He just needs elevation. We get a nice shot through the front of his turret because it... Turan 6 has basically no ar no turret armor and no armor whatsoever. It's a pretty terrible tank. And we managed to shut him down. Well, get shot in before he gets shut down. Then we shut down the object 934, which is nice. There's an M60A2 now marauding forward. And while we're in this position, it's great. This is Farmsville because no one is looking at us. And we can just start putting the hurt in on these guys as they're pushed into, again, very vulnerable positions. We get a nice shot into the Leopard 1A1. As you can see, we're just trying to keep this gun going as much as we possibly can because... We don't want to waste the opportunities at getting shots at these guys. This M60A2 is something that I want to get rid of, though, because it has that stopping power of just deleting someone with the ATGMs. Fortunately enough, he gets shot down. Now there's the TR85, which will slap a shot straight through his upper plate. And where he is, hopefully we'll get some shots at him. We're just going to... He's the only one left on his team now, so we're going to drive forward in the hope that we can try and spot him up. Because he's just behind all the foliage and the cover, so we can't see him. Try and hit a shot on the move there. What was I saying about hitting most shots on the move? Yeah, I jinxed it. Unfortunately, we didn't quite hit him. But he's just playing careful not to get hit by us. But he makes a mistake and pokes out just a little bit too much. And we finished the game with a really nice total for the M60A1. Finished with the victory. Five kills, 9.6k damage, 950 assistance. Ace tanker. And 1,851 base XP. A really nice game for the M60A1. I say it's not a bad tank. It's just that the M60A3 exists. And why would you play the M60A1 if you can get the M60A3, which is basically the same tank, but better? That's my problem with the M60A1. The M60 they don't have anything that makes me want to go back to ever play them again. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.